Okay, hi everyone. My name's Danish. Um, I'll be the session chair for the next three talks. Uh, so first up, we have Christopher Neugebauer. Uh, Chris is an Australian programmer from the Tasmanian city of Hobart. He's worked on mobile development, focusing on Android, <coughs> and over the last year has been knee-deep in back-end web development with Django. He's been a past board member with Linux Australia and has been a fellow of the Python Software Foundation since 2013. So, all to you now. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Yes, uh, as mentioned, uh, I am Christopher Neugebauer. My Twitter handle is cleverly hidden on the slide here. I'll let you figure out what it is for just a moment while I talk a bit more about myself. Uh, one thing that wasn't in the bio that uh, Danish uh, mentioned is that I am a serial conference organizer. I've been uh, deeply involved with PyCon Australia since 2012, uh, first as co-lead organizer for a couple of years, and then as a person who does uh, whatever other people on the uh, committee don't volunteer to do um, in order to keep the thing running. I ran linux.conf.au earlier this year in Hobart, and since then I've uh, moved to the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, where I am running the very first North Bay Python conference, um, which is all to say that like, I feel like I'm qualified to talk about building conference websites, and today I'm going to talk about a project that we did with uh, linux.conf.au this year, uh, replacing the, an existing tech stack with something that was based on Django. Um, so conference tech is a really narrow topic, which is, you know, it surprises me that there are as many people in this room as there are. Thank you for coming along. Um, it's a narrow talk with broader lessons. Uh, and to make it better for you, rather than speaking specifically about conference tech, I'm going to use conference management software as somewhat of a, a case study in building up a new software project uh, using Django. And uh, we're taking this approach uh, for two reasons. The first is that conference websites are an inherently boring uh, topic, uh, yet they do a lot of things that most small websites will probably need to do. Uh, there is a lot of basic uh, CRUD tasks, you know, cr creating stuff like profiles and and reading them and using them and deleting them and those sorts of things. And there's basic content management. And then there's a few specialist tasks that require a specialist software to be written in order to solve those tasks, the domain specific sort of stuff. And the other thing is that if you are here in this room at the moment, which you are unless you're watching it on the video, hi people on the video, um, you've used a conference management site almost certainly. In particular, if you are here in this room today, you have used the exact uh, tech stack that I'm going to be talking about. And uh, if you were here last year, you have probably used the stack that I'm going to be talking about replacing. So there is a good chance that you have some experience with the software that I'm talking about, um, which makes it a particularly good thing for a, a case study. And so maybe you, you need to make some similar decisions. What I'll be talking about is, is somewhat of a first principles approach to why you'd choose to base a reasonably non-trivial site upon Django. And um, so we're going to talk about what Django did uh, for us and how Django itself uh, made it really easy to make that switch. Um, so first up, some background. Uh, why this project? Uh, why did it need to happen? Um, so first up, LinuxConf AU, it's a, com a community organized free and open source software conference. It's been running since 1999 and uh, it runs in a different city every single year and it runs with a different uh, organizing committee every single year. And um, Linux.conf.au has a very strong emphasis on doing things with a free or open source software uh, wherever possible. It's uh, been somewhat of a, a front runner uh, of, of a lot of conferences in that it sold tickets and such uh, via the internet for a very, very long time. And it predates a lot of the services that people use to run conferences like Eventbrite, like Stripe, those sorts of things uh, by a number of years. Uh, PyCon Australia is the conference that you are currently at. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I've, uh, I was the lead organizer of it in 2012 along with uh, Joshua Hesketh. It's a, it's a Python conference and being a Python conference, one of our remits is as well as being a place where people come along to learn about Python, how to use Python, how to develop Python, is uh, to support development of Python open source software and to increase the amount of Python open source software that is out there being used and being developed. 
Um, and both of these happen to be organized by Linux Australia. So there's a, a fairly uh, strong uh, overlap in, uh, in the organizing communities of both of these conferences. And so these are both conferences. That's the thing they have in common. Uh, they need to do conferency stuff. So like, you need to be able to buy tickets from them. Uh, you need to be able to ask people for the talks they're going to submit. You need to do those sorts of things. Uh, most conferences, including LCA and including PyCon Australia, uh, do, the, do these things through websites. And they have some sort of commitment to developing their own software and building a community around it. So, um, so using software as a service sort of stuff has generally been out of the question for both of these conferences. And so we definitely had software that did the sorts of things that a conference needs to do, um, but we replaced it. And so before we talk about Django, I'm going to talk a bit about the software that we uh, that we replaced. And that software was called Zookeeper. It's a uh, conference management system. It was written for linux.conf.au originally, and PyCon Australia became a user of Zookeeper um, starting in 2012, the year that we took over. Um, so Zookeeper's first release was in 2007, and generally its development path was, was um, defined by changing of conference teams in different cities for each year. So there'd be incremental development, and with each year there'd be a relatively high level of turnover of the core developers uh, on the conference. Um, each year, new developers tended to relearn aspects of the system and adding things to the system fairly early on in the year. Um, from what I could gather, there wasn't a lot of broad scale planning from year to year um, of that. And Zookeeper was quite old. It made a, a bunch of technology decisions that made sense in 2007, but technology moves fast and even decisions that you make in one year might not necessarily be decisions that you would make um, at some point in the future. And there was a, um, there was getting to a point where Zookeeper depended on quite old components and it made it quite difficult to set up development environments. Um, it made it quite difficult to track uh, security updates for, for components. And Zookeeper was designed in a monolithic fashion. So a lot of the features that Zookeeper had uh, were built into Zookeeper itself. The various components of Zookeeper weren't particularly extricable, so if you wanted to have one feature of Zookeeper, you needed to have the entire thing around as well. For example, if you, you wanted to build a wiki, you would need to either build it into Zookeeper or you'd need to shim a separate unrelated software package uh, along the side of it. And so when the 2017 team came along to Linux ConfAU, uh, it was uh, clear to us that we either needed to do a very large overhaul of Zookeeper to, to fix a lot of features in it, or to come up with a fully f uh, fledged replacement. And after some discussion with the team, we came to the conclusion um, that we should uh, replace Zookeeper rather than doing an overhaul. Um, I gave a, a talk about the decision-making process uh, that, uh, that we came to, uh, that, that helped us make this decision last year at PyCon Australia. You can find the video online on YouTube. Um, and we made the decision to replace uh, Zookeeper with a Python-based stack, uh, so with a Django-based stack. So um, let's talk a bit about why we made the decision to, uh, to move to a Django-based stack. So the first reason is that Django, first and foremost, is a modern web development framework. Uh, there are major releases of Django basically every year, maybe slightly more often, uh, there are security updates for Django that, um, that preserve backwards compatibility, and, um, and it's relatively easy to, uh, to upgrade uh, between versions of Django as long as you, uh, as long as you track them on a, on a relatively frequent basis. Um, Zookeeper's development environment, as I mentioned before, was notoriously difficult to set up, and that was somewhat of a barrier to entry for new contributors coming along. Uh, building off a modern, up-to-date framework means based to install a development environment, you could actually use modern uh, development uh, best practices. So if you wanted to get our website uh, and run it on your local machine, it was basically as easy as running pip inside a virtual env. Uh, in practice, this was not entirely the case, but it would get you about 95% of the way there. And I, uh, I, that's a thing that we're working upon improving. Architecturally, and this is actually very, very important to us, is that Django sites are constructed out of numerous Django apps. Uh, these are effectively plugins. So 
Because Django is popular at the moment, people have already written apps for a lot of common tasks that you might want to solve. And it's relatively easy to pick and choose the best components for your purposes and build them into the website that you're going to, uh, that you're going to deploy. It basically means that if someone has solved a problem that you have, probably multiple people have solved the problems that you have, you can go and choose the components that best suit your needs, and then you only need to go and write the things that don't yet exist. Basically, Django gave us the freedom to work on aspects of the site uh, that we needed to work on, and we're able to leave the rest of it um, to the experts. Uh, so you might have gathered this already. A key decision for us using Django was that we could adopt apps that people had already written. And I'm going to talk you through a bunch of the, uh, the, bunch of the things uh, that we used in, in the website. So as I mentioned, conferences are in the business of running conferences and uh, not writing content management systems. And Django has a lot of CMS uh, applications out there that plug into Django sites. Um, we chose Wagtail, which is a Django-based CMS that one of our uh, team members already had fairly extensive um, experience in using and recommended it to us. Um, so you know, the bread and butter pages of websites, we, you know, the walls of text sorts of things, we have lots of text, a few images, those sorts of things, uh, they're properly catered for by Wagtail, and we have a bunch of those, like our tell us about the conference, tell us about the city, those sorts of things. But our web designers came up with a really interesting design for the front page uh, using these, these panels. You know, some of these panels would be blue with a photographic background and have a picture in it on the left, and some of them would be white without a photographic background. And then at some point later on, we'd need to introduce the keynote speakers, which breaks that panel approach. And they have a design of their own. And Wagtail actually made it really, really easy for us to build up a site that, or build up a page that used these various, uh, used these various panels. Um, it lets you design page structures basically like their Django models, which is great. Uh, and this stream field thing lets you make pages that consist of repeating mixed content, bits of content. So like I want to say, here is one of those panels, so show us the panel or show us the keynotes. And from those models, Wagtail, uh, it gives you a really, really nice editing interface for free. It's like on a, on a par with WordPress how good it is, and it builds up an editor that is based around, uh, based around the models that you have. So you can see that uh, you, we can add in a basic content panel like, uh, like we described, or we can add in one of those keynote blocks, and it builds up all the fields for the things. And so you can actually build up those structured pages in a really, really nice way without having to mess around with the HTML for the, for the page like you would have to with a, a flat CMS. And we also had a bunch of pages that were not controlled by Wagtail themselves, but we wanted to make it easy to update the text on them as we needed to. So the presentation list was uh, built, up by a different, um, built up by a different application, but we also wanted to have this, this text in here. We wanted to be able to change it. And so Wagtail has snippets, which is a feature where you can uh, edit arbitrary bits of text inside the CMS editor, uh, the CMS uh, management uh, system, and it would replace the, the text that appears on those various pages. And so you, you basically go and create a Django model with the, um, with the stuff that you want to store, and then you get an editor for it, and it's really nice, and you can uh, manage it without having to go into the Django admin interface or those sorts of things. So one of the things that Linux Conf AU does uh, from year to year is give attendees a wiki that they can use to organize things like uh, birds of a feather session, uh, things like that. Under Zookeeper, what would tend to happen um, was they'd, uh, they'd take a standalone wiki uh, program like, uh, like MediaWiki or uh, Moin Moin Wiki, and they'd, they'd patch in the, the authentication from Zookeeper into that, and so make it so you could go from one to the other relatively easily, but the, but the pages would look completely different if you're on the wiki versus the main website. Uh, for LCA 2017, we're able to drop in Django Wiki, which is a Django-based wiki, believe it or not. And we could make it look like it was part of the conference site because we could just drop it into Django templates relatively easy. Basically, was part of the conference site. And so we're able to basically make the wiki pages look like they were part of the rest of the conference site, which was kind of great. So as it turns out, as well as for really, really generic tasks, there are also Django apps for managing conferences themselves. And uh, the one that we use is called Symposion. Symposion was commissioned by the Python Software Foundation for PyCon US in 2012. It's been used by PyCon amongst other conferences, including PyOhio, including uh, KiwiPyCon, uh, for a number of years now. 
it's actively maintained, it has a commercial sponsor, and there's a bunch of conferences that are out there uh, using it. And Symposion did a lot of the things that Zookeeper already did for us that were specialized conference management tasks. Um, we could do things like managing the call for proposals, managing and publishing the schedule, and we were also able to do something we hadn't done before, which is do basic session staff management. So we're able to have people opt into uh, to session chairing uh, given talks through the conference website. And one of the things that we benefited from is that we're now using a stack that not just PyCon AU and Linux.conf AU use, but numerous other conferences out there used. And, and they've developed on Symposion themselves. And so there are features in Symposion that we'd never have thought about uh, adding in Zookeeper that we're able to get for free and that we were able to make use of because other conferences had found them to be a useful thing. And we were able to rely on the broader community to write and to maintain that software. So it reduced the maintenance burden on, on us as conference organizers and it increased the overall quality of the software that we use. And that's a huge win because we're conference organizers, we want to run conferences and, and not spend our time keeping software up to date. So despite getting all this existing functionality, when we switched away from Zookeeper, we still lost a bit of functionality. Not everything that we wanted um, was a thing that was already out there for us. And the main result of what links.conf.au did last year is a project called Registration. It's a, uh, a registration package for Symposion. Um, it sells tickets for conferences. Um, I wrote a lot of that, and you can talk to me about it, but a lot of the stuff it does is relatively dry, but it appears fairly boring to people using it, so I'm not going to dwell on it too much. Um, but one of the problems with Zookeeper uh, as a ticket sales platform is something that manifested that, that's manifest in, in conferences, which is that ticket sales tend to happen very, very late in the conference management life cycle. So like you start, you open ticket sales in October for a January conference, and absolutely every single task involved in running a conference happens at that particular point, and suddenly the people who've been working on code are no longer free to work on code and solve the problems that come up. So these things never get solved. We were able to rewrite from the ground up, and what that meant was that we were able to focus on solving actual problems that had happened year upon year. Uh, one metric that I'm particularly proud of is that we're able to completely eliminate a support load that occurred year upon year um, with every PyCon AU I'd been involved with and with every linux.conf.au uh, I'd spoken to organizers of. We completely eliminated that source, uh, that, that support load by being able to focus on solving the problems by changing workflows. And basically, because everything else is community managed, we were able to work on the ticket sales software without wor worrying about maintaining everything else. And that's meant that we've been able to fix issues and improve that software. So um, let's finish up by talking a bit about how we went. Um, I personally feel as though the project to move away from Zookeeper and over to Symposion and a Django-based uh, Django site, by all accounts, went pretty well. Um, here's a few of the things that I thought were particularly good. So uh, when you adopt new software, there's always teething issues. If you, uh, you move away from something, you, you lose features that people have got used to, um, you know, functionality that people have depended upon, particularly in the papers review process, uh, went away when we moved over to Symposion. Generally, we were able to make changes that program reviewers uh, complained about and wanted us to fix very, very quickly. Um, you know, we were able to make those changes uh, and get them deployed on a very easy basis. Uh, generally, our organizers fought less with the software. As I mentioned before, um, we reduced a lot of support load that we'd experienced in past in previous years by thinking about solving the problems that, that had been recurring with ticket sales year upon year. Um, as we approached the conference, we started having attendees looking even closer at the website. And being a tech conference, you tend to have people complain about tech. This is something that happens. Uh, and attendees noticed that there were features missing. We were able to immediately point our attendees at the GitHub repo for our website. We were developing out in the open for the entire year. We were able to ask them for patches, and, um, and then we would merge pull requests as they came in. And this happened at least twice during the conference. We got an improved iCal feed from an attendee, and we got a bunch of CSS improvements. 
Um, this speaks to how easy it was for our attendees to create a development environment and get up to speed uh, on the system. Um, it's successful to the point that other conferences have adopted our suite. Um, PyCon AU 2017 has used the LCA 2017 suite uh, on a wholesale basis. It's using everything that we used. Uh, I gather that LCA 2018 is using some of the uh, features that we used, but not all of them. And I'm informed that we will be using the suite uh, for North Bay Python, probably because I'm somewhat involved with it. But I'm not involved in PyOhio, and they've said that they're probably going to adopt our, uh, our suite as well. Uh, you may be wondering what things we probably wouldn't do again. Um, in general, I feel as though there's not a lot that we definitely wouldn't do, except probably run with a full-blown CMS. Um, CMSs solve a problem where you have multiple collaborators working on a page, and some of them might not be entirely technically inclined. Uh, in practice, we didn't have all that many people updating copy on the site itself. In fact, it was, it was mostly just me. Uh, even with one other collaborator in our environment, because everyone is relatively technically proficient, uh, working on a pull requests-based um, workflow might have made a bunch more sense. Um, and so doing that all with static pages and pull requests to update the site probably would have worked just as well as having a proper CMS. Uh, Django has template views, which allows you to just load a Django template and not have any, any logic uh, behind it. And that, they're pretty good for static content, and they allow for a pull request-based workflow. Um, I'm probably going to be using that for North Bay Python rather than Wagtail. That's basically the only thing that I would probably, probably change in hindsight. Um, that is all the prepared content I have, and I am now happy to answer questions. Anyone got questions? Feel free to applaud if you want to. <laughs> One of you seemed to be itching to applaud there. So, questions? Ooh. So you mentioned at the start um, with some of the history that uh, it predates things like Eventbrite and Tito and other so sites that mm -hmm. solve this problem. Yes. Are there still things in that space you think you'd want to pull over? Or do you think you're diverging from the more general ticketing uh, system? That, cause it, they're much more focused on ticketing rather than site organization. It so in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, conference tickets, um, there are some conferences where the only thing that you, the only thing that's attached to the conference is the conference itself. So you show up to the, you show up to the conference, and everyone shows up to the same thing, and you might sell different classes of tickets for that. Um, PyCon AU and Linux Confer, you have relatively complicated tickets that ref that reflect the the structure of the event, and I wasn't really able to find anything that um, that dealt with sort of the ticket inclusions that we have and the various sub-events that you know, need to discount things for or whatever that Eventbrite does or Tito does. Um, more generally, I feel as though LCA in particular, to a lesser extent, PyCon AU, but certainly LCA, has a remit to use open source software and contribute to the development of open source software wherever possible. And moving over to Eventbrite would probably have been a problematic thing for our attendees, as well as for the community. Um, this is less of a concern for PyCon AU, but I feel that it's nice that we can support a Python-based stack that does this thing and is, in, and is open source. It also saves a bunch of money. Are you comfortable, uh, thank you for an excellent talk. Are you, you comfortable um, talking through um, what the problems that the workload that you've saved for the conference organizers? Yeah, okay, so Zookeeper has a model where once you, um, once you have finalized your shopping cart, your, your, your registration, um, you as the attendee can't make changes to what you have, um, what you've ordered. So a particular problem for this is that um, certain ticket types, the professional ticket type at PyCon AU and LCA would include a free dinner ticket in it. Um, and you would need to select the dinner ticket in your uh, shopping cart when you went through and registered. Um, if you forgot to add it, then you would need to have staff come back and add the dinner ticket for you. Um, so we saw this as a recurring support issue for PyCon AU and 
when I spoke to LCA organizers, that was a thing that needed to be uh, fixed or that they needed to deal with year upon year. And so we came up with a model whereby individual users can go back into their, uh, into their registration and add the things that they might, might have missed and give them the free tickets if they're entitled to them. And basically, for LCA, we sent out a mail out saying, these are the things you've ordered, these are the things you're entitled to but do not have, you can fix this here. And we did not get a single email about fixing registration for LCA. This is a little more detailed because I know a little bit of the stack. Sure. But, um, have you had, when looking into this a little bit, uh, Symposium is fairly well maintained upstream and they're still definitely having some problems getting that standardized and reused correctly. Yes. Have you had any more luck with that? Okay, so I noticed this and um, I, had a f I found a fairly, um, I'm going to say a uh, passionate uh, complaint made to me by one of the LCA 2018 members when they tried to run my test suite for registration, which is that uh, I depended on upstream symposium and not the LCA fork of symposium um, because certain models in it uh, diverged and it wouldn't run on the LCA 2017 model, um, on the LCA 2017 fork. I'm currently working on a fork of symposium that makes it so that you don't actually need to fork it in order to get the base functionality. Uh, and so working on figuring out where you can, um, where it's possible for like consumer apps to, um, consumer apps to uh, extend things that are in base Symposium rather than having to fork and change the things that are in base Symposium. Um, I hope to have that finished for North Bay Python um, because if I can, like, Conference, this is like actually conference-driven development. Um, I, you know, I have a conference to run and I can, if I have an actual use case for it, I'm more likely to fix it. And I feel as though the, uh, the Linux Australia forks of Symposium would probably go away if I needed to, if, if I were able to finish this. And I feel like this would be the case for most other prominent users of Symposium. Uh, we've got someone up the back there. Uh, extension to that question, really. Yeah. Uh, why why not put a registration into Symposium and just have it exist there? Um, at the moment, that would require. Um, uh, at the moment, that would require um, the upstream developers of Symposium to want to have it as part of the package, and currently, they don't. Um, Django is quite good at being modular anyway, so. At the moment, the only dependency that registration has on Symposium itself is the presence of uh, a model for a speaker profile. So to tell whether or not you're entitled to a, um, to tell whether or not you're entitled to a speaker ticket. Um, if I got rid of that dependency and figured out how to make that a modular thing, then there's no need for them to actually be part of the thing. And it's so, um, it makes sense for them to be modular, and I think that like, feels a bit more like how Django does things anyway. Like, we have a distribution of Django apps that make it possible to run a conference, and here are the bits that fit together, as opposed to here is a giant monolith of things that have to work together. And I think that's, a, that's you know, one of the, the big things that we benefited from, I think, uh, was being able to pull in components and, and put them together. There's no reason to make them inextricably linked. Okay, I think we have time for one more question. Yes, the question is whether we have one more question. It doesn't right. seem that, doesn't That's seem that it. way. Well, thank you all for coming along. I uh, hope you enjoyed the talk. And uh, yeah, if you have any more questions about uh, what we did or conference tech in general, uh, I will be around the conference. So we'll probably be working on tomorrow's slides after lunch. So uh, find me soon. Thanks for coming along.